One of the few breaking changes to Inertia V2 is that partial reloads are now asynchronous. So previously when we did a partial reload, these were synchronous and were canceled if another request was made. What we're gonna do in this episode is demonstrate this with version one and version two, so you can see the difference. And then if you are relying on these being synchronous in your code, you can go ahead and adjust them. So let's hop over and create a really basic example of this. It's really difficult to demonstrate this, so I'm gonna do my best. Okay, so let's head over to our web routes and let's go down to our dashboard once again. In here, we're gonna go ahead and output the current date time, just so we can see some sort of changing value change as we make requests. So we're gonna say inertia and lazy. Remember we're working on V1 at the moment, so we don't have that optional method. This is now lazy. And in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sleep for a specified amount of time from our request, which we'll send in the query string. So bear with me if this doesn't make sense as we start to pull in the buttons to get this to work, it will start to make sense. So we're gonna sleep for a specific delay from our request. So let's go ahead and make sure we pull that in from here. And let's go ahead and bring this into scope within this closure. And then we're gonna go ahead and return the current date and time to a date time string. Okay, let's get this output on the page and make a request to update this value. So let's go over to our dashboard. Let's go and define out our props here. And this is gonna be that date time string. So let's pull that in and we'll go down here and dump this out in here. Now at the moment, if we head over, we don't see anything because of course we've marked that as lazy and we're gonna to need to make an initial request to pull this in. So let's create out a reload function in here to reload this and we'll pass in the delay here with a default of zero. And we'll just use router to reload this, our inertia router to reload this. So make sure we import this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in to our data the delay here. So let's pass that delay in. We can either do this or just this. And then we are only going to refresh that date time. And then what we can do once this component is mounted, we can go and reload this with a delay of zero. So basically get that initial value when we refresh the page. What we can now do is we can create a button to show what's gonna happen when we make a partial request and the difference between the synchronous and the asynchronous versions. So let's create out a button in here to reload this. And when we click on this, we're gonna set a reload here with zero. And let's say reload, uh, let's just call this normal request. And let's call this slow request and we'll set the delay on this to something quite big, let's say three seconds. Okay, great. So when we send a normal request down, that's just refreshing the prop with that route to reload. But when we send down a slow request, that's obviously gonna take a delay of three seconds since we're passing that in the query string, and that's gonna take three seconds for that data and that prop to be reloaded. Okay, so now we're working in Inertia V1. Let's make a slow request and then immediately hit this button to make a normal request or press slow request twice, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I'm gonna press slow request, then I'm gonna press normal request. Now notice what's happened is the previous request here was canceled and then this one was immediately run. So this is synchronous. We're running these in order of what we've clicked on them or sent the request over, but this one has been canceled now. And then this data from this new request that we're making will have taken effect. So even though that this slow request is running, I click this, this data immediately updates. Now let's go ahead and switch over everything that we've got here to Inertia V2 to see the difference. So let's go back over and we'll do NPM install on View 3 next and we'll do a composer require on Inertia Laravel 2 dev. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go back over and rerun npm run dev and let's take a look. Okay, great. So now I'm gonna hit slow request and normal request and you can see both of these are happening asynchronously. 
So I can press this as many times as I want and all of these will be queued up and run at the same time. So it's really difficult to figure out a scenario where your data would rely on these synchronous versus asynchronous requests between version one and two. But hopefully that gives you a visual idea of how these are different between version one and two. And you can adjust your code accordingly if you were relying on slow network requests or network requests to run next to each other. And more importantly on V1, any subsequent request that the user makes to be canceled. I think that's the main thing here. If you were to click on a request and then click on another request, if you were expecting the previous request to get canceled, to adjust your data somehow or display new prop data, then you'll need to tweak your code to get this working. Probably pretty rare that you're gonna come across this, but it's good to know the difference between V1 and V2 and how partial reloads work.